Hello and welcome back to Winners and Losers, the show that looks at the highs and lows of world football. Today, Joe's away, so I'm joined by our good friend Dave Jackson from All Time Tens. Yeah, hi, and what better place to start than last night's final between France and Portugal. I'm gonna kick it off by talking about France. France were my team the whole way through, you know, obviously, it, I've, being, being, obviously being like an Arsenal fan, I've always had a strong allegiance to the French national team. Yeah. And they, they just choked. They started so well. The temp, tempo was there. Sissoko was running at players, you know, mm. Paul Pogba wanted the ball, Griezmann wanted the ball, Gir Giroud had some lovely little flicks and stuff like that. And it's just, and then as soon as, soon as, it got, as, soon, as soon as that happened, it was almost like they just stopped playing. Well, it wasn't dissimilar from Germany in the semi-final against France, actually. They kind of, they were very patient, they were picking their way through, and it kind of seemed like a matter of time. But as Arsenal fans, both of us, we're used to this idea that mm. actually it's not just always a matter of time. Sometimes you need to start pushing more, you need to commit yeah. a little bit more. And they played Pogba so deep in this game that at times they were only attacking with four players. Yeah. And this is a very accomplished Portuguese defence. Yes. So, so, I mean, what do you think Deschamps should have done differently with his subs? They just seem very strange. A lot of them, what, what, what was on called the uh, Olivier Giroud for Junior. 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 That was like a like for like. Like, like if, if it's not working with one, then, then, then change the system. You yeah. know, bring on Martial. You have a bit of pace. Start to stretch that defence. We, we, we actually just started the segment talking about Paul Pogba. And why he was so deep is, is it, yeah. it was just, it was like, you, you, you want your best players where they, where they, where they can actually do damage. Mm. But you want someone who, who can beat a man and use that extra bit of space to get a brilliant ball in. You know, and I think that's what he did in the semi-final against Germany. He, he, had that, he had that one turn and then he managed to cross the ball for Anton Griezmann to, to score. And it, it was just, it, it was just so strange for someone like the substitutions from yeah. uh, Didier Deschamps. Portugal, I want to talk about Portugal. Okay, think, cool. Because cool. I think they've been a little bit underrated throughout the tournament. Obviously, they only won one game in normal time. However, they didn't lose any games as well, which is, you know, pretty good. And I thought that Renato Sanchez, who became the young player of the tournament, he was really impressive last night. Yeah. In the first half, he was being asked to play passes, which he doesn't seem to be very good at. But in the second half, they were asking him to run through the midfield, to find space on the break, and he did a really good job. And in the end, Portugal managed to exploit a bunch of space to get Ede a goal in extra time. Well, I thought that Deschon was pretty pretty comfortably outcoached by Fernando Santos in this game. I think Portugal have been one of the uh, most well-drilled teams at mm. the tournament. Um, and there's an extent to which when people were saying it was a bad game last night, I sort of thought, well, that's a sign that Portugal are doing their job. Yes. They're really restricting space. And in a way, Ronaldo going off made things simpler for Portugal because they knew what they needed to do. They needed to kind of play within themselves, they needed to keep their defence really tight, restrict space as much as possible. Yeah. And actually later on, I thought, oh, France are starting to figure them out, France are going to get through them. And that was when Payet went off, it's when Giroud went off. And again, things got easy for Portugal and they were playing out really, really well. Yeah. And in the second half as well, they changed their game to fit the players they had, which is something they've done throughout the tournament. We're not saying that Portugal were kind of like dominant in any way but they, they knew what their game plan was yeah. and they executed it. Their first shot on target still came in the 80th minute, which is not, you know, ideal. But in uh, the closing minutes of, of normal time, and certainly in extra time, you started to think yeah. every ball played out of the defence found its man. And, and both times that they've scored a goal in extra time at this tournament, it's been scored by a substitute which shows that Fernando Santos rea yeah. realises the strength of his squad and where he needs to replace players when the time comes. So I was really, really impressed by him. And I thought that actually Portugal were really good money for their win. So while, while France weren't the kind of anointed champions in their homeland that everyone thought they might be, we have to say congratulations to yeah. Portugal because it was a fantastic tournament and a fantastic performance, not just by the players, but also by Fernando Santos. Next up, we didn't talk about him much just then, but we have to discuss the man himself, Cristiano Ronaldo. Now, what did you think of this tournament? I thought he, I thought he had a very, very good tournament. It's weird, like, it's the first time I've actually seen him as a leader rather than just a great player. Them, like, actual tears when he actually went off injured, and at the end of the game, when they'd won, it was just like, that. that is what football means to this guy, and it's just... It, 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 it was extremely refreshing to see, if I'm being honest. Yeah, so the way that I'll sum up his um, tournament, I guess in one word, would just be like a leader. I feel, mm. I feel he, he led that Portugal team A to the final, and then almost like after he'd come off the pitch, he was still leading them during extra time, getting them pumped up. And I think that is testament to Cristiano Ronaldo. Um, mm. A as a man, and B as a leader. Well, so. we've seen kind of the best and worst of him this tournament. I mean, early on there was frustration in that Iceland game when afterwards he was kind of complaining about their small mentality or whatever, which yeah. really didn't look good. But then, but then we saw that you, you know, like you say, the leadership um, of Ronaldo. So 
So we saw that video of him encouraging João Moutinho before the penalty shootout. Uh, so that was a really impressive side of him. And now, having won an international tournament, which as we're constantly reminded, Lionel Messi has not done, there were people saying last night that this makes him the greatest player ever. What do you think of that claim? Personally, <laughs> I, I don't believe he's the greatest player ever. He's an absolute ridiculous player. Absolutely amazing. Top, 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 top class player. Um, but if, okay, the way that I, the way that I was putting it, if I, if, I, if, I, if I could pick one player in the world right now, it would still be Messi over Ronaldo. Mm -hmm. And I think that, that's, that, that's the most diplomatic way that I can kind of like put it, really. I don't think he's the greatest of all time, but what I will say is I also don't think that losing the final would have diminished him as a player. No. Uh, he, he's, he's just as good a player now uh, as he was yesterday before the match, and he will always be remembered as one of the greatest ever to play the game. He is currently doing things that nobody has ever done at his age. And when he was young, he did some things that nobody's ever done full stop. I yeah. mean, he's a really remarkable player, and I think that everybody, even even Barcelona fans possibly, might feel a little bit happy for another great moment yeah. in a great career of one of the all-time great players. Okay guys, that's what we think, but let us know who you think is the greatest player of all time by letting us know in the comments. Now, as you can tell, this hasn't been the usual winners and losers format, but now we do come to some winners. We want to discuss some of our personal awards for the tournament, and we start with our pick for player of the competition. Okay, this is this is a little bit left field, but I'm gonna have to go for Aaron Ramsey. He's like a different player. Yeah. Like like he, he's got four assists, which is joint top with Eden Hazard, but his all round play has just been amazing. Like he, he's such a great team player. Mm. Like you know he, he's he's been running, he's been making moves, he's been coming short to to dig in when like Wells needed an extra bit of defence. So yeah, so that's why my pick will be Aaron Ramsey. Um, yeah. Well, I think he's a fantastic choice, but I am gonna go for Pepe. Uh, I actually think he's been Portugal's best player this tournament, even though he missed the semi-final. Um, he's really big, he's really strong, he's intelligent, his positioning is always just right. And Portugal's success this tournament has been built on a rock solid defence. Yeah. And Pepe is absolutely at the heart of that. I don't think he's one of the kind of three or four best centre backs in the world, but he's been absolutely tremendous. And I think that he deserves a shout because he's been a real leader for that team. So regardless of what you think of Pepe, he's been absolutely fantastic this tournament. And he's now a European champion and he won the Champions League in the space of about a month and a half. So it's been a tremendous few weeks for Pepe. So next up, we're gonna discuss our goal of the tournament, which was your strike in the competition? Mine was the Switzerland player Shakiri, with his overhead bicycle kick against Poland. It was literally out of the top draw. Picked it up out of the top <laughs> draw. What a goal, get in. Yeah, it was pretty impressive. I've gone for Paye uh, in the first game against Romania. You know, they needed a goal. It was the last minute of the match. The whole country was expecting something. Paye picks it up outside the box, shifts it onto his left foot and bangs it in the top corner. It was absolutely ridiculous. And the reaction afterwards, yeah. You know, the tears and the emotion of, of the entire crowd, not just Paye, I thought that it was an absolutely tremendous goal. And finally, what was your favourite moment from this year's tournament day? Favourite moment was probably Wales beating Belgium. I thought the way that they played, that's almost like the videos that you should show of a team performance of a manager going out, setting out his team against a better team. Let's have a look, look. player for player, Belgium are a better team than Wales. But the way Wales played in that game was just simply amazing. It, it, it was like every player knew what they were doing. Every player fought for each other. The way they had balance, you know, they had pace where they needed pace. They, they were extremely solid and they come from a goal down. And then obviously like the celebrations after the game was just, it was just so, um, so, so beautiful to see. Yeah, so that's probably my moment of the tournament. Wales beating Belgium 3-1, how depressing is that? But that was my favorite moment of the tournament. No, that was a great one. I've gone for Gianluigi Buffon uh, after the Germany game. Now the penalty shootout was pretty amazing in itself. It's pretty much my favorite penalty shootout ever because it had absolutely everything. It had one or two competent penalties and the rest were absolutely <laughs> god awful. But afterwards, Gianluigi Buffon goes over to Manuel Neuer and with tears still on his face, congratulates him on what he's done. He went around and shook the hands of the entire German coaching team and all the players uh, he could find. It was an absolutely amazing thing for him to do. And Gianluigi Buffon, I mean, he's one of the gentlemen of the game. Yeah. And whilst I didn't want Italy to go on and win the tournament, it was hard seeing Buffon lose. Yeah. Um, 
and I really hope that we see him at another international tournament. I hope that he makes it to the World Cup in 2018. So those are our picks for the players, goals and moments of the tournament. But do you agree with us? Let us know what you think in the comments below. Yeah, and looking forward to the new season. Why don't you check out the 10 players your club should sign over on Eurofootball Daily. And as ever, don't forget to like and subscribe. Peace.